Uh, welcome to everyone for joining us today uh, for the art of staying positive, productive, and sane uh, during times of uncertainty. My name is Carolyn Broderick. I've been involved with Hacking HR um, for about a year. Um, and please reach out to me if you're interested in being involved in Hacking HR. We're always looking for uh, people who want to be involved in um, uh, topics uh, that, uh, that move uh, the needle in HR and talk about the future of work. Um, so today's panel, we're going to provide sensible tips and strategies to stay productive, uh, positive, and sane during these times we're uh, living in. Uh, these experts uh, will give you what you need to know to get through times of social distancing and isolation. And here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to go over uh, how coronavirus has impacted our ability to socialize. We're going to ask you guys uh, to share your ideas uh, throughout and uh, how you're staying productive and sane. I'd like to introduce the panel. Um, first, we have Pam S Samarco. She's the president and CEO of Green Training Associates. And in 2009, Pam founded her company to develop exceptional leaders and talent to solve the world's challenges and build sustainable organizations. She accelerates business growth through training, talent, coaching, and career solutions. And Pam has deep experience in complex training strategy, leadership, sustainability, workforce capabilities, org development, and culture change. Pam offers extensive experience as a solution architect, a consummate instructional designer, master facilitator, and impactful performance coach. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is Taryn Abrahams. Uh, Taryn is a corporate behavioral specialist and human interaction expert. She helps companies implement behavioral best practices to improve workplace interpersonal relations and holistically strengthen corporate culture. Uh, she leverages her experience as a psychotherapist um, and Taryn's innovative suite of workshops, coaching and consulting services are designed to enhance employee morale. Um, foster collaboration and productive workplace environments, and nurture employee loyalty and ambassadorship. Our final panelist is Vinay Singh. He's a strategist, consultant, and thought leader in the field of talent acquisition and human capital management. He's been a trusted advisor to hundreds of Fortune 1000 businesses. Vinay is the author of the groundbreaking book, Your Future uh, in, in Pieces, that shines a light on the struggling American workforce due to recessions, ageism, and income inequality. So thanks to our experts for joining us today. Um, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks for that, Carolyn. So let me get started with our agenda. Um, and like I said, we're going to be asking you uh, during different breakpoints um, how you're coping. Uh, we're going to look for uh, suggestions that we can share with each other. Uh, but first, let's go here. How has the coronavirus impacted our ability to work and socialize? Uh, Pam, could you uh, help us with that? Of course. Thank you, Carolyn. And welcome, everyone. So like everyone, the virus has significantly changed everyday personal and business life for me. Um, Everyone is feeling the same emotions. Many people I speak with are acknowledging the roller coaster of ups and downs on their days. And it's very human uh, with the disruptions and the massive urgent changes we have all had to make. So we feel vulnerable, which is also very human. So for me, I come to, um, the, to life with a strong sense of curiosity. I like to collect leading edge, cutting ideas, what's going on, the trends, and I also have a continuous learning mindset as a talent development consultant. So the pandemic has accelerated the pace of new information in every respect, from data science models to the government, to healthcare, to innovation in the scientific community and public response. So as a society, we've even actually created a common language about flattening the curve, quarantine, contact tracing, pandemic playbook. So we're learning and adapting and using this language of catchphrases that help educate us, remind us of uh, behavior change we need to make and also celebrate resiliency, generosity and contributions. The outcome is that this language strengthens our social connectedness. 
So today's webinar is our gift to help you as our community with the skills and best practices that we as our, as our expert panel can share to help navigate these life-changing conditions. More practically, I think there's a lack of readiness, which creates a lot of stress. So it's important to develop an emergency readiness and continuity action plan for both work and home. So when you feel helpless and consumed by those news reports and the abrupt changes to daily life, I encourage you to create an action plan. Everyone can proactively manage some of your stress by sorting and, and prioritizing your concerns. And those would be actionable behaviors. So figure out what you can and can't control, make a plan for what you can control and make peace with what you can't control. And I also, my last tip is I look for places to put my personal energy to take the focus off myself and gain perspective on my problems, which may not be as grave as others, certainly. So who can I help today? Errands, groceries, other ways to be kind, coaching colleagues who might be having trouble, send, sending an uplifting message to someone who's ice, you know, in quarantine. And you know, those are the, the ideas that I have to share on this. Karen, what are your thoughts? Thank you, Pam. That was very helpful information. And thank you, Carolyn, as well, for setting this up. You know, I think one thing like we can assume is that we're all way out of our comfort zone. Uh, we have our routines have been disrupted. Um, when our routines are disrupted, it can cause tremendous amounts of anxiety, um, an unsettling feeling, if you will, um, perhaps sadness, boredom. And um, you may even feel feelings of resentment or anger, um, anger towards la lack of freedom, um, fear, frustration that you may get the virus, that maybe some of your friends and loved ones may get it, or maybe perhaps they already do have it. So I think it's fair to say that we're way out of our comfort zone and we're way out of our normal routine. Um, and we're, none of us are alone. I think it's, if there's anything that I can express on this call today, that we're all in this together. Um, and we've been through similar hardships in the past, maybe not exactly the same, but we've been through challenging times in our, as a society. We've been through two huge world wars. We've been through 9-11. Um, we will get through this. Um, we, you know, and it's important to, to make sure we remind ourselves that we are resilient as, as a human race and we are resilient as a country and we will get through this. Um, you know, when we are in times of crisis, we do have the tendency to overthink. And if, if I can add, what I can add to this slide is to be mindful and, and create a mindset where you are mindful throughout the day. When we overthink, we tend to become hooked on obsessive thoughts, which is why we sometimes find ourselves looking at the news numerous times a day, why we're tracking people trapped on a cruise ship, or you know, why we feel compelled to constantly uh, review this information. It's, it's a normal reaction, the way our brain handles stress and crisis. So it's important to at least be mindful that we can tend to become uh, laser focused, if you will, on some of the negatives that are happening around us. And so it, it, when we find ourselves in this stuck state, it can cause a chain reaction and it can cause fear to narrow our vision. So fear paralyzes us, right? So it doesn't allow us the ability to make informed decisions. It doesn't give us the ability to problem solve in a way that's effective. And so if there's anything I can add to this slide, it's, it's to practice mindfulness, um, practice being aware of the, of the type of thoughts that you're having throughout the day, because those thoughts, if they're negative, can have a direct effect on how you overcome this pandemic. So with that said, Vinay, I'm gonna pass it to you. Thanks, Taryn. Uh, and I really like what you had said. I'm just gonna build on that. For me, uh, what I've started to do, especially in this kind of a very interesting hopefully very short term time that we're all in is at the end of my day, I kind of like put together a little sheet of things that I've got to do for the next day. So basically I don't just jump up, get out of bed and jump on my phone. Uh, this allows me to know when I do wake, you know, I've got something planned and I'm going to go over to my, off my home office and, and take care of that. But I do take 10 minutes to do some reflective breathing. Uh, and this goes right into what you were just saying, Taryn, about mindfulness. Uh, so I like to sit 
you know, I like to sit on my bed, but some people might like to sit on their floor. And in that few moments, I'm just waking, just realize what kind of day do I want to have? What am I going to want to expect to accomplish today? Thinking about these things. Um, thinking about the number of things that I'm going to want to do, but maybe, all right, as long as I get three things, two or three things that are really important out of the way, keep that in my mind's eye, be mindful of all the things that are going to happen today that might derail me, and understand that, uh, you know what, I'm going to get derailed. It's going to happen. That's okay. So that's the important part of uh, taking the moment in the mornings, not just jumping up and running to your phone, but relaxing, being mindful, breathing, trying some reflective breathing, which I can actually uh, show our audience here uh, at some point. Um, and it's really quick, easy stuff. You don't need to be in a yoga expert or anything. But you know things are going to derail you. You might get upset by turning on the TV. You might get upset if you about uh, uh, overexposure to coronavirus or the stock market or this and that and the other. Just know that that's going to happen, and it's okay for that to happen. It's all going to pass. So um, that's what I think is really important today, to just be able to be mindful, respectful, take some time to reflect and breathe, and prepare yourself for the coming day. I'm going to turn that over to Carolyn now. Thank you. Thanks, Vinay. Um, I, I'd like to turn it over to the participants um, in the chat area. Um, I'm just going to ask, what, um, uh, how has the coronavirus impacted your ability to work and socialize? Um, if you're willing to um, uh, share. I guess nobody's been affected. <laughs> No, um, oh, well, I got one. Uh, oh, here we go. I work almost completely at home. Uh, basically, no socializing. I'm yeah. able to continue to work, not as fun as usual. Except, uh, except for events. For events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's why we need to be creative in terms of bringing joy and fun into our life. It's, it's not as easy as it was before. You could just leave the house, make plans, and, and meet up with people. But I think we can still find ways to connect. I mean, I set up Zoom calls all day long. I'm connecting with family, friends, um, coworkers, clients, you know, anything to keep the connection going. I think that as human beings, we're not meant to be kept separate. We're not meant to be isolated, you know, but we can still stay connected even in midst of social distancing and isolation. The Which one I think uh, I, we just got was uh, working from home every day with a toddler. And uh, oh boy. I really got to give it to you on that one. Because oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, like Vinay said, I think sometimes you have to expect the unexpected and, and learn. Honestly, what this is teaching us is it's learning, teaching us to be flexible right? And, and being able to pivot, which I think are all important aspects of, of business, but are also apply to a personal life as well. It's, a, it's about adaptation. So yeah. it's the expecting the unexpected where change is a yeah. constant. And I think yeah. some of that is, um, you, that's that readiness, right? So yeah. all of a sudden what we planned, you know, uh, is not coming into, you know, is the has gone from what was normal habit to now I need to adapt and figure out what is life like and how do I make this work? And, you know, we're creatures of habit as humans. I think that's where we struggle with change and finding that yeah. way to um, figure out what's got to be done through a different, you know, a different path. So, right. Right. so it's good. Yeah. Thanks for everyone for sharing. Uh, one person shared that they still have normalcy because they're still able to connect with employees. Um, I'll move on to the next. That's great. Um, so how are you staying productive, Taryn? So I've always been a list person. Um, I get a lot of joy over creating a list and that feeling of checking it off when you've done it. It's like almost a high for me, quite honestly. It really does give me such gratitude to do that. But I find that my lists have changed and I, I had to adjust 
my expectations of myself. I don't know about everyone on this call. I am a competitive person and I tend to be competitive mostly with myself. I'm, I'm hard on myself. And so I, I like to get a certain amount of things done throughout the course of a work day. So those lists, I've had to change. I've had to shift my expectations a little bit. I'm not sleeping great every night like I normally do, right? So I have to be mindful that maybe I have to keep my mornings a little bit lighter and, and identify when I am my best throughout the day. Some people are best in the morning. For me, I get better as the day goes on. I wake up um, and, and I can do some great work in the evening. So I make a list, but I make sure that the list is achievable. Like Vinay had commented, put three things on your list. You may only put one thing on that list. Maybe that one thing on that list is to keep my toddler sat happy and keep my family healthy. I mean, maybe that's your to-do list right now. That's okay. I think we need to be kind to ourselves and maybe kind of uh, not expect so much from ourselves right now. And if you get one or two things done throughout the day, that is a successful day. And, and be kind to yourself. If you don't get to all three things on your list, that's okay. Be very careful that you don't spend too much time the next day obsessing over what you didn't do the, the, the day before. That could, that's a great way to waste energy and to really negatively impact your mood. You really wanna start each day fresh if you can. I know it's hard right now for those of us perhaps have lost loved ones, lost friends. Um, and I know where some of us are grieving right now. So I know that this is easy words to say, not always easy to implement, but if you can keep it simple, um, I say make a morning list of a couple of items, be flexible, it, you know, maybe redefine how you get work done. Maybe it's when your toddler is sleeping. Maybe it's in the, in the evening, you know, um, nine to five workday is no longer the case anymore. You really do have the control to work how, how it best suits you, which I think is one of the many silver linings to working from home right now. Um, you are in charge. So I say if, if my biggest um, comment for this slide is, you know, really be flexible, make lists that are achievable. There's nothing worse than not achieving your list and then feeling hard on yourself. So be careful you don't set yourself up with, with disappointment. So keep it small, keep it short, and find time throughout the day to take care of yourself. So even if you're focused on your list and you want to do that to-do list, take breaks throughout the day. Um, I read something the other day that the average person has only a 90 minute attention span. So, you know, if you're that person, which most of us probably are, it's okay to get up from your desk or wherever you're working and grab a snack and grab some fresh air and play with your kids or watch a short film or watch a television show. Um, be careful of watching news during the day. That's a great way to derail your business and your work. Um, right now, everything on the news seems negative you know, stay informed, maybe 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, and really, really be very, create some good boundaries around how much news you watch. So that's my, um, that's my two cents. And Vinay, what would you like to add to that? Thanks, Taryn. And I'm surprised that uh, you uh, read that about 90 minutes and the attention yes. span because I came from uh, a background where I was a managing director of uh, staffing. So I have, you know, dozens of clients and Fortune Magazine reported that the average hiring manager has an attention span of a goldfish. I kid you not, you can Google it. <laughs> so with that in mind uh, and having to manage Citigroup, Pfizer, Louis Vuitton, Ann Taylor, yeah. Facebook, you name it, uh, it was critical for me and everybody on my team to uh, be very, very focused and to have um, work time blocks. And uh, I assume that uh, just hearing from you being a competitor, uh, you know, you've got to get stuff done. We've all got to get stuff done. We all have our jobs. And, and even if we don't have jobs, uh, you know, we do have things that we've got to get done to be productive throughout the day. So with that in mind, you know, I've kind of taken that to my home office as well. And I, I like to use a calendar, any kind of calendar will do. If you use Google, you use Microsoft, whatever, even if you have just a paper one. But in work time blocks, um, I know during those time blocks, uh, for example, the three that I said when I wake up, I'm going to accomplish, you know, I, I might have like six or seven 
As long as I get three, I'm going to be okay. That's how I set up my morning. So I, I'm allowed to fail. Not 100%, but I'm allowed to fail. And so I put my work time blocks on my calendar. They're usually 60 to 90 minutes. And when I'm on that work time block, I mute my phone if I have to keep it by me. But I try to actually put it in the next room where I can hear it if it rings, but not. But it's just not in front of me. Uh, it allows me to not see a little ping that comes up from a colleague of mine anywhere in the country or a, a college buddy or even a work colleague who just wants to chew the, chew the fat for the day. Um, so being distracted is something that is easily uh, avoidable, but hard to, to actually put away and push off. I try to do that during the work time blocks. Um, and so during that 60 to 90 minutes, I try not to get on social media. I don't pick up the phone and make a phone call to a buddy, but I do, I will make it after the time block. It's kind of a reward po uh, uh, policy, right? You get the 60 to 90 minute time blocks taken care of. You get your work done. Boom. You can go and watch a little ESPN. You can make a couple phone calls, et cetera, et cetera. So I think keeping distractions to an absolute minimum during work time blocks so I can get things done. That's really important to me. And I, uh, that's how I'm, trying to stay productive. And so I, I think that's what I'm uh, going to uh, add to this slide. Pam, how about yourself? Well, Karen and Vinay, you make some great points around productivity. So I'll um, add some layer to that. And I think what for me, productivity has a few elements. So I'm a business owner and I work on activities now that are creating dramatic change in direction of business. So I'm looking at what is the way to innovate and thrive and continue as this, you know, through the crisis and then beyond. So I'm actually investing the time um, balancing between client contacts and social time, but I'm also working on, uh, like I've created a, a business continuity plan that actually is the preparation for next stages. So working on the business, working in the business, I balance both. I also like the idea about keeping the daily plan Taryn, I'm a list person too. I like to plan my priorities for the week at the start of the week, and then I adapt the plan as I go. And I use Pam's rule of three things. So every day I choose three must-do activities because that allows me to focus and center on what do I need to accomplish and make those things happen in those focus time blocks like Vinay does. And I think it may actually be a relief to focus on work. So I love Vinay's suggestion. Um, turn off the TV, you get your 15 minutes of news in the morning, maybe a bit at lunch when they do the live briefings, and then sometimes in the evening, but it goes to bed with a negative mindset. So I try not to do the yeah. evening news too much. Um, yeah. to stay, and also to stay productive personally, because all of a sudden there's a psychological principle that work expands to fit the time that you have. So if you have 24 hours, all of a sudden things go off the rails. Right. So I'm actually doing some early spring cleaning at home, regular exercise, um, lots of social connections, cooking new recipes, um, doing some upskilling in some areas that have been on my mind. But I want to call out the fact that everyone's work situation is different because you may be an essential worker, you may be furloughed, newly remote, a business owner or in transition. So everyone is adapting to your new circumstances and you wanna be patient with yourself at this point. If you are working, make sure you learn about and maintain HR's um, remote work policies through HR or your direct supervisor. If you are HR, you know the people side creates a lot of pressure, the remote culture, connecting with your employees. Trust and open communication lines are essential if you're an HR practitioner, because now is your time to shine. It's also crunch time to make sure that your employees are healthy, safe, and you know engaged, and also working as best as they can with some forgiveness, because there is a lot going on in people's lives, like Karen said. There's not any moment where you just don't know how this is impacting an individual. And so if you're not currently working, then you're identifying your immediate needs and building an action plan, drawing on federal and state resources. There's lots of information available at the federal and state level. And I know this is a broader audience. Um, we're based in New Jersey here, but we welcome anyone out of state to you know, consume the federal and state resources. I want us to remember that we're human beings, not human doings in terms of productivity. So I define productivity broadly, just like Taryn said, 
And if you get done those three things and you may have those accomplishments to say, maybe it was a call to my health insurance provider. Maybe it's ordering pet food. Maybe it's taking a walk. Maybe it's integrating some, some work time. And you balance that with your accountability and, and commitments for your job if you are working. So make progress, not perfection, is a phrase that I like. And making sure that it's connected to accountability and filling commit, commitments, fulfilling commitments that you're on deck for. So a couple of brief tips. Make sure you get dressed every day like you're going to work. Even if you have a later start, Karen, I'm not a morning person either. But I will <laughs> be working till, you know, 10 or 12 p.m. So I'll start my day late and I'll keep going. But that commitment is my commitment for how I operate and when I'm best, most, you know, tuned in to what has to be done. Um, that's it. I am on deck at 8 a.m. if there's a meeting or a program. <laughs> that's not, that's my commitment. So I fulfill my commitments as needed. Um, maintain your work rituals if, if you can. I like the micro breaks. That's what I call them, Vinay, when you take five or 10 minutes at the end of your 90 minute block because you do need to build movement in your day. Mm -hmm. Stop breathing. And um, for busy households, this is an interesting tool. Using Owl Labs is a new uh, tool. It's like scheduling conference rooms, but it's scheduling rooms in your household. So if you do have a busy house with you know, teenagers doing remote education and, and a spouse or significant other, and ensure your tech security is in place. It's a huge problem if you don't have your devices set up with VPN, encryption data, all the other IP protocols. So there's hackers out there that are waiting for those gaps because so many people have been rushed to a remote work situation before they're really ready. So I encourage you to make sure that um, your computer systems are set up and safe. And those are my tips. So Carolyn, why don't we take some ideas from the participants? Can I just say one comment? Um, for those of the people on the call, I know we, we all know people like this. I used to be like this. For those people that keep news on in the background and think you're not listening to it, it's just background noise. I'm here to tell you, you are still somehow internalizing that information. So if you're looking to improve your productivity, turn the TV off. Put some music on. Great suggestion. I put music on too, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, and listen, we, we've all been there. We've all done that. We, we put the, special pe especially people that live alone, I find we, we sometimes turn the TV on because it just makes us feel like we're not alone. But I'm, tell I'm here to tell you, we still are processing and internalizing all the data that's being shared on TV. If you're going to turn the TV on and leave it on, put on something positive. <laughs> you know, put on a program that is not talking about death and dying. Um, yeah, and I just want to add, if you're going to, if you're somebody that does like to have that music or TV on, just at least give yourself three work time blocks where you've got to get work done, where it's just got to be off. Just get that work done, 69 yeah. minutes, and then reward yourself. Go back on ESPN and turn up the DHA, whatever you want to do, Classic Rock 105.5, whatever. However, however, you're most productive. Some people like quiet, some people like, um, some people like music. Uh, we have a few comments. Uh, one person is saying they need, they keep the news on has to, and they're going to change that. Um, and uh, someone said that it's hard because of the distractions of too many people being home, but having a short daily to-do list is helpful. And then another participant mentioned that they like the must do, the three must do list. Mm -hmm. uh, and another person commented that they go in their office and shut the door and they have quiet. Uh, and they canceled their Hulu Live. That's the way I like to work. I just, <laughs> those blocks of quiet. Um, yeah, yeah. Too easy for me to lose my place. Um, um, thanks, folks, for, uh, for uh, sharing that. And also, um, we could go on to the next one, and it dove dovetails nicely. Uh, you know, we were just speaking, uh, Taryn, about uh, putting on something in the background that's positive. So, um, so with that, how are you staying positive, Vinay? Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Uh, for uh, for me, I, I love going to the gym. Uh, I leave the house, I go to the gym, I get my work done, and I feel good getting out. You got the endorphins flowing, and so now what do we do, right? Or at least what do I do for? Uh, because I I don't work out at home. I actually moved all my weights and my bench and everything. I gave it all away. Um, 
But in this kind of time, uh, I've hopped on to YouTube and I found a whole bunch of videos um, where I'm actually learning to do my old high school routines again. I forgot all about push-ups and sit-ups. I, for yeah. some reason, I, I, I always thought that you needed other, you needed machines. And Which is a great workout. Hands, but you don't need anything. Uh, you know, when we, were, when we were at the gym, I mean, you did your sit-ups, you did your push-ups, you did your, uh, your, um, your cardio, uh, running in place. I mean, all those things are stuff that I just totally forgot. So I'm doing them every day. Uh, because I, since we don't even get out of the house, I lived in Manhattan from two twenty uh, from 09 to 15. Even if you didn't even go to the gym, you're still walking a couple mm -hmm. miles a day. So it is a full body thing that you're doing when you're just out there walking. When you're in your office and you're walking to different departments, walking to different meetings, you're still walking, you're still moving, yep. you know, uh, going into other colleagues' cubicles. You're not doing any of that stuff. You're in the home. So it's even more important to like, I was doing jumping jacks. I mean, who am I? What am I doing out here? Of course, I did it alone in my bedroom, but I was doing jumping jacks. So you can do stuff. And so I'm finding this stuff on YouTube, which we all have access to. You don't need a desktop, you can get your phone. But there's so many different kinds of routines. And some of the uh, these uh, um, coaches, gym coaches that are online, a lot of them are just doing these free corona uh, routines, uh, just giving back and stuff. And some of them are pretty funny. I mean, you can find some comical guy, which is tough because you you, you know you don't want to be laughing while you're doing push-ups. At least I don't. I just walk around. <laughs> but you, know, you can have a lot of fun with that too. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, a, it's so important to just be flexible. I guess that's where where I'm really going with it because I can't pick up the weights, uh, and I'm not just going to go picking up like uh, pots and pans and stuff. Uh, but you know, <laughs> believe it or not, doing about 50, 60 push-ups. Boy, that was tough. It was so easy back then. It's tough now. It's, and, I, and I thought to myself, I've only been removed from the gym for about six weeks. How is it that I, your body weighs a lot, right? So doing push-ups, doing sit-ups, doing calisthenics and these kinds of things, staying flexible, that's really important. Keeps you, keeps you in a good rhythm. Keeps you in a good mood. And that obviously does get endorphins uh, moving. So um, I guess the last thing I'm just going to say is only, you know, since I'm at home for the last six weeks, uh, I've just noticed, uh, you know, the uh, abdominal area of mine just kind of expanding. And uh, <laughs> well, actually, the, the truth of the matter is I'm lying. It's been expanding for years. So <laughs> all the more reason to, to be doing something in the home, because then you, you don't feel so bad for eating a whole bunch of pasta at the end of the night. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got. How about you, Pam? <laughs> Hey, I admire your dedication. I've been really trying to get my exercise in too. I have my uh, yoga that's Facebook live streaming. I've been doing a power walk out, um, you know, by myself to, uh, you know, steering clear, social distance, blah, blah. It's, all, it's so important. The movement is critical. And I, I find that to be um, admirable that you're they're going back to your high school routine. So um, let me share a quote. <laughs> I don't know who the author is, but um, that staying positive doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time. It means that even on hard days, you know that better ones are coming. So that's about mindfulness. It's about resilience. It's about a warrior mindset. It's about courage. So I think about resilience, not as bouncing back from adversity, but bouncing forward. So it's about continuity. I don't think life will ever go back to where we were. And we need to be able to think about being positive because out the other side there's opportunity so there's four elements of resilience that that help me stay positive positive. and the first is a strong self-esteem confidence in my abilities to navigate tough waters and that's essential because you need to believe in yourself that you're going to manage this and that you're going to control the things you can control and that you're going to move, be able to move yourself forward and you're going to adapt and be agile and responsive to rapidly changing conditions and staying safe in that process. My deep personal connections are, are the second way to stay positive. My personal and professional network involves supporting each other and being there for each other. I would encourage you to remember that networking is about reciprocity. It's about as much as you can help someone as you would ask for them to help you. The third item in um, staying positive is about setting and achieving goals. I'm, I'm, I'm 
engaged with goal setting because I've, I've really, since like, people ask me like i set new year's resolutions and i categorize them so i'm a goal-oriented person from that standpoint so i categorize them for personal and business and you know connections to to finance and you know goals for my home you know i'm i'm, I'm oriented toward that aspect because i think about life in a way that i want to thrive so positive optimistic mindset is generally how i'm wired i use positive self-talk to enable that but the, the setting and achieving goals, you, staying in t true to your intentional goals gives you something to focus on and it feels like we're moving forward. Um, so I also want to encourage you with effective coping strategies as a lifelong yoga practitioner. I do a personal checkup when I see where my mind, body, spirit connection is, what's off balance, and that may, becomes a priority in my to-do list. So the to-do list isn't necessarily tactical for business, but I encourage looking at the, all the dimensions of your life because this, this time we have now has given us a pause. All of a sudden, we have time to think about life. It gives us perspective about what's working and what's not working, which sometimes is more challenging for us as we are quarantined and we are human beings. We're sort of standing still and it gives us a time to reflect. So that can be that time where you're saying, okay, mind, body, spirit, something's out of connection in this balance and, and how do I want to remedy this? And this is a fluid process. So it's okay to adapt your coping strategy to connect that mind, body, spirit with the daily action plan. So what do you need to manage? Well, maybe creative problem solving because I have to adapt something in my routine to be productive in a different way. Um, using valuable time for positive activities. Mm -hmm. You know that to-do list that never gets finished. And of course, protecting your health. That's the body of the mind, body, spirit. Um, staying active and plan immune system boosting foods because the stress of these circumstances can affect our immune system. So we want to make sure we boost that with food, supplements, healthy diet, enough rest. And of course, spirit is um, not only your social connections, but managing anxiety with practical measures and emotional support. I know Taryn spoke about that at the start of the program, but they look at meditation. There's mobile apps for Calm, Headspace, Wobot, and there's also federal and state resources for mental health. There's a mental health phone number um, for New Jersey for sure. And I see on the, on the CDC website, now there's support for anxiety and stress, and they're giving some guidance and resources. So I encourage everyone to take that time because about being positive, it's not, oh, I'm always going to be happy, but it's finding the path to maintain during the difficult times that will help you get out the other side. So Taryn, what suggestions can you offer to stay positive? Thank you, Pam. So yes, I, as, as someone who started their um, professional career in the clinical space, I'm very passionate about mind, body, and spirit and the impact of mental health on our well-being. And I wanted to mention this to the audience because when I was a practicing clinician, um, I utilize cognitive reframing a lot with my clients. In fact, even in the coaching space that I'm in now, this is something that's very effective. Even in coaching, I've even seen this utilized with nursing, the nursing field, um, and I've seen it used in HR. So cognitive reframing is basically the notion of if you change the way you look at a situation, it changes your experience of the situation. Now, I'm not talking about living in denial, right? We want to, you know, actually, you know, know the facts and real information and data and things that are happening in our society, but how we interpret it, how we internalize it, that's the part we have most control over. We don't have control over the chaos that's happening around us, but we do have control how we manage it, how we process it, and how we respond to it. So cognitive reframing, is actually involves a few steps. The first step is to um, take stock of the type of thoughts that you have. Learn about your thought process and your thinking patterns. Do you tend to be a, po a positive, optimistic person? Do you tend to be negative Nancy kind of person where you look at the news and you focus on, oh, this is awful, this is horrible, and you tend to focus on the negative? So the first step is learn about your thought patterns, okay? 
The next step is to make a list of the thoughts that you're having throughout the day. Now, you're not going to be able to list everything because we have thousands of thoughts in, in the course of a day, if not millions, okay? So, I mean, it's constant. We're always thinking. Even when we're sleeping, we're, our brains are always at work. But if you can identify the top five or ten thoughts that you tend to experience throughout the day, for example, I'm stuck in my home or I'm gonna get sick, okay? So those are the types of thoughts that you wanna take stock of, okay? The next step, the third step, is to replace those thoughts with more positive thoughts. So a perfect example of a reframe is, I'm stuck inside and I can't go anywhere. A reframe would be, I get to be with my family all day, and I'm home and I'm safe, and we're gonna be okay, okay? So that's one example of a reframe. Um, another example of a reframe, I'm going to get the virus. A reframe would be, I'm going to practice social distancing, exceptional hygiene, eat well, sleep, and take care of myself and do everything possible to minimize my risk of obtaining this virus. Do you hear that difference? It's, it's very, very different. One has a negative spin and one has a positive spin. Um, that's based on reality. It's not like, oh, let's all sing and hum and pretend this isn't happening, but it's, it's really looking at the silver lining of, of what's happening here. Um, you know, this is a very emotional journey that we're going through. And the reality is we're all grieving. I mean, if you look at the stages of grief, it's denial, blame, and acceptance. We're all going through those emotions. Some of us are still in denial. You still see people not practicing social distancing. You see people still having parties. I have friends in my network, in my circle, that are having play dates with, their ki with other kids. So there are still people in denial. Then there's people in blame. I hear people blaming China. I hear people blaming the president. You know, it's very normal. That's a normal process that we go through. And then what we want to ultimately end up is acceptance, where we've created a new normal. We've developed some resiliency. Right. And what is resiliency? I mean, resiliency is a lot of things. It's optimism. It's emotional intelligence. It's self-awareness, being aware of your thoughts and stopping them when they happen and replacing them with something positive. It's about problem solving. It's about being proactive. It's about communication, adaptability, flexibility, emotional management. All those things are achievable if you are uh, practicing mindfulness and cognitive reframing. So again, if you are somebody that tends to be a negative person, put a rubber band around your wrist in the morning or a hair tie if you're a woman. Put it around your wrist and snap it hard if, when you catch yourself having a negative thought. Sometimes a little bit of slight pain will make you aware of how often you're feeding these negative thoughts throughout your mind, throughout your day. And what you will find is your anxiety or perhaps even your depression will improve when you gain more mindfulness around your thought process. Um, I already talked about the news. I won't, I won't beat that one. Um, you know, try to see the good in a difficult situation. My mother always taught me, look for the helpers. Look for the good. There's so many people out there doing wonderful deeds. Um, it, every day there's good stuff happening. You may have to work harder to find that online, but there are media sites. There are places you can go to. Um, one off the top of my head, I know CNN has a newsletter they send out every day that's only about positive things, good deeds, people recovering, you know, positive things that are happening in the community. That's, you want to balance the negative with the positive, right? So, and that is, again, a choice that's being mindful. And find the silver lining. I really do believe in my heart that there's the potential of a lot of good to come out of this. I think this is going to make us stronger. I think it's going to reinvent the way work gets done. I think that there's a lot of positive um, I think perhaps we may even appreciate each other a little bit more after all this is said and done. So that's what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on that silver lining and that's what helps me get through my days. Thanks, Taryn. Let's see what uh, everyone uh, is doing to stay positive. Oh, and one other thing, be very careful 
your amount of alcohol that you're um, taking in. All right. So I know I have a lot of friends that, you know, a lot of these liquor stores are doing home deliveries. It's very easy to fall into that mindset of self-medication and it's quite tempting at times, but be very mindful and careful that alcohol is a depressant. So it's, it, 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 at the beginning, it may feel like it's a good solution, but the way the brain works and the way it works with emotions, I'm here to tell you alcohol not only um, can cause anxiety and depression to get worse, but it can also um, make it harder for you to ward off illness. It does impact your immune system as well. So be careful of that. So I have one uh, comment from Christine. She's walking several, several times a day, a week, uh, I'm sorry, several times a week after work with a neighbor. Good. Anybody else? Just make sure you're six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> from Teresa, on sunny days, sitting outside and taking in the sun, mindfulness, self-reflection, and being grateful for the things I do have. From the things Pam has mentioned, I feel like she is in my head, LOL, Taryn, Thank you for the breakdown of practicing cognitive reframing. And Vinay, it takes discipline to work out at home, and I commend you. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for sharing. Um, so now, uh, our final uh, question uh, that the um, uh, panelists are going to go over is, how are you staying sane? Pam? So thank you so much. And boy, I think we're so synergistic and this is a, a delightful program that uh, we're sharing ideas and I'm in, enjoying the, uh, the comments from the chat. So as, as I mean, staying, staying sane is essential. I mean, this is a much a more extended period of time than anyone expected and it may continue. So I think that reframing that Taryn spoke about is essential. And as a talent development business owner and consultant, one of the most important tools in my toolbox are my skills. So I think about observing how true leadership at every level is essential during and after the crisis. So pulling myself forward in looking at what leadership is doing, how do I wanna operate, who I am as a person, how I'm connecting with people, how helpful I could be to others. This is about being you know, our best selves as part of being sane. And I think that the remote work is really going to be game changing for our society because I don't think that's going to go away. I think even after this subsides, we're yeah. still going to see a fair amount of remote work because it appears to be pretty effective. And all of a sudden jobs that they thought couldn't work at home now are able to more effectively. So I, I draw on the skills that I teach in my workshops and more such as leadership, courage, emotional and social intelligence, managing complexity with critical thinking skills, all the information coming to us. We're processing it on an hourly basis and daily basis about changes and new information that's emerging and how we internalize and understand and appreciate that with curiosity and what we do with it. I think innovation is at an all time high, especially in the scientific community as well as the creative people who are responding, like Elon Musk, who's turned his uh, car manufacturing yeah. plant into, into a um, ventilator plant, and he's flying ventilators on his private jet to whomever <laughs> needs them. There's a lot of intelligent risk-taking, and then there's a lot of non-compliance in people's actions. You know, we kind of look at that and say, mm -hmm. you know, we're the civic-minded people who understand the executive order. So, and of course, change management is top of mind. We've talked quite a bit about that. But to stay sane also, my number one technique is to breathe. Besides using my skills and helping others, it's to meditate and do my yoga practice. Because we, when we're stressed, we don't breathe. We stop breathing. So, And when we sit for too long at our desks. So we know those circumstances that we're facing are temporary. I also think about making plans. What do we want, want to most do when things return to normal? Well, I can't wait for you know, a hot fresh bagel and a cup of coffee from my local deli and those kind of activities. What am I missing and what do I want to resume? So staying sane means looking forward with optimism while understanding right. and acknowledging the severity of the current situation and being present and knowing that this is temporary. What are those things that we most look forward to allows us to know that there's something out the other side. And I also keep the mindset for the good things like Karen said, there's wonderful things happening. 
and it's keeping your ear to the ground, talking to people, listening, watching, because America is strong. And I think everyone that's pitching in is contributing and, you know, looking for the helpers and being part of that mass effort is going to be critical for everyone because we are United States for a reason and we are taking good care of each other in the way that we're staying safe and quarantining. And these thoughts are part of the positive mindset that enable me to know I'm navigating these tough waters and that gives me hope and keeps me sane. So um, Taryn, um, why don't we go back to you with your thoughts? Thank you so much, Pam. So much great information and I just wanna echo your comments about breathing. When we are in crisis or when we are depressed, anxious, or stressed, it is a normal physiological response to stop breathing deeply. We end up sh breathing very shallow, shallow breathing. And there's actually studies, there's a science behind this. This is why yoga and meditation has been around for centuries is because it, it, there's, a, there's a science behind, if you practice mindfulness around your breathing, it can, call, it can create weight loss. It can create um, you to fight off infection better. So there is so much science and, and statistics and studies around breathing. If you do, if you get nothing else out of this seminar to just breathe, be mindful of your breathing throughout the day and you'd be surprised, you'll start to find that you're not breathing right. You're breathe, you should breathe from your belly button, not through your chest. So if you can you know, have some deeper breaths throughout the day, that something as simple as that can actually change the way you feel. But in terms of how I stay sane, I gotta be honest with you, it's a requirement I have to laugh every day. And there are days I may not feel like laughing. It may feel wrong to laugh, I, right? I just watched the news and a press conference and all these people are sick and how can, you know what? I can't control what goes on outside, but I can control the energy that I have in my home. And I do have a 17 year old daughter and I am a single mom. So, and I'm also a business owner and it is my responsibility to make sure that we have joy in our life every single day. So it, whether it's going on YouTube and putting on Sebastian Maniscalco, which is like one of my favorite, favorite comedians right now, guaranteed laugh. Um, you know, or if it's just looking up some older comedians that I used, you know, that I've admired throughout my life, you know, whatever it takes to just lift that mood. I can't tell you how good it felt. A couple of nights ago, I had a FaceTime with my family and I had a belly laugh from something that struck me funny. I felt like it was free therapy. Like, honestly, it felt therapeutic to laugh. It's okay. Let yourself laugh. It's really okay. Um, and again, stay connected with family and friends um, and, you know, just to stay sane. I have to remind myself every day to do a reality check. Let's do a reality check right now. 85% of people that get the virus either have mild, moderate, or no symptoms. 80, up to 85%. That's important to think about. That this is not a death sentence. That most people are fine right? So just because you get the virus doesn't mean bad things are going to happen to you. So I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves of the facts. It's very easy to get caught up in the news. It looks all very grim and negative, but the reality is 85% of us are going to be fine. Yes, people are going to be affected. Yes, we're going to lose some of us, but most of us are going to be okay. So that is something I repeat to myself every single day when I watch the news and when I go to sleep at night. Most of us are gonna be okay. Um, and that does bring comfort for me. And those are the things that, does, that do keep me sane. So how about you, Vinay? Yeah, thanks, Karen. Uh, I'm gonna build on that too. Um, you know, for me, it's, uh, it's a lot of being mindful. And I think we've talked about that a, a number of times today. Uh, not blowing things out of proportion and staying in the moment. Uh, and, and breathing, of course, as, as we've all ta now talked about. You know, for me personally, uh, I know that I shouldn't be looking at the stock market uh, every day, but I do, and I have to. I can't stop checking it. So uh, meditation is important. I mean, I've got to be able to breathe because if I look, I know what I'm going to turn on the stock market, the, the CNBC, it's not going to be good news. I know it's going to give me something disturbing, but yes, I, I still got to check it. 
So, um, but there are things uh, that we can do that we haven't been able to do or we've been putting off because we are so busy and especially with work. So as soon as this is all over, we're gonna be back to the routine of saying, I'm sorry, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. This point in time has allowed me to go onto Facebook and LinkedIn and join groups that I didn't have time to time for before. Yeah. Now I love cars. I'm a car enthusiast. I go all over the country, uh, but I haven't been in, involved in a car uh, club for uh, a number of years, like I used to back when I was younger. But now I'm on some Facebook groups, and I love being part of them because I love to see all the things that I you know I just didn't have the time to. Uh, if you're into cooking or if you're into gardening. You'd be surprised the kinds of groups that are out there that you can join. And you might actually end up with new friends and colleagues that are in your community. It's shocking. But this, is, would, be the, this would be a great time to get involved and start doing those things. So we've got this moment in time where we're at home. Take advantage of it. Find how to take advantage of it and find things that are going to make you happy. Not things that are going to put more uh, things on your plate like work find things that are bringing, going to bring you happiness that you've been putting off for one, two, three, five, ten years. So you can do those things. Um, and I, I heard somebody say, uh, Vinay, you know, that's great that uh, you have the discipline to work out at home. So I've got a challenge for everybody. And you don't have to have a high level of exercise discipline to do this. I challenge everybody to go on to YouTube. And Google working out with Richard Simmons. Now, when you do that, Here it's are some results from a search. I don't know why my phone just did that. <laughs> um, thank you, Google and uh, Bezos for, or and everybody else for watching. <laughs> conversations. But when you type in Richard Simmons and working out, you're gonna. See, if you don't know who this person is, he's going to look ridiculous. This was like the hottest guy back in the day. I'm not kidding. So if you don't know who he is, I'm not kidding. He was like number one in America, maybe the world. Yeah. Now, here's the challenge. Don't just turn it on YouTube while you're sitting in your office. Push your chair, your chair out of the way. Google it. Turn it on. And you don't need weights. You don't need anything. You just got to stand there, watch it and perform at least 10 minutes of the Gene or the Richard Simmons workout. If you do that, I'll send you a copy once I can go to a FedEx and UPS. I'll send you a copy <laughs> of my personal soft copy essay, uh, which is an update to your future in pieces. I'll do that if you give Richard Simmons and YouTube and yourself 10 minutes because, okay, you might not get the whole workout done because you might be rolling around on the floor laughing hysterically because this guy is serious. He's not, this is not a comedy, by the way. This is a real <laughs> workout routine. It's going to look like in 2020, like it's a comedy. It's not. This is how scary and screwed up we all were back in the day. <laughs> so that's a challenge. You don't need a lot of discipline to do that. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, I'd like to end on uh, uh, this particular slide on something else that's also positive, motivational, and, and, and a little bit more serious. If you take out a piece of paper and write down all your colleagues, your family members, and your friends on one side, and then on the other side, just write, are, they, are you really positive and, and do you get a lot of uh, joy and, and do you laugh a lot when you talk to each person? So you're doing this in the comfort of your own home. This is a private thing. And then just look at it when you're done, maybe you have 15, 20, 30 people on there. Who are the top five people that are the most positive to you that you think? Because they do say, and I, I assume there's science behind it because it makes a lot of sense to me, but you are the culmination of the, the top five people that you engage with. Yep. So in this moment in time, yep. take your private time, put together a little list, look at who the five top five people are, is, are and put a post-it on your, on your, on your uh, monitor. Make sure to call those, top, those five people every day if you can, because that will probably bring you to a more positive place than maybe you are pre prior to doing this. So there's a little exercise. One is a challenge, and I kid you not, it's a serious exercise. I know you're gonna say, Vinay, this was a complete comedy farce. It's not, it's a totally true thing. And the other one is a, a, a challenge to uh, see who's most positive in your life. That's what I've got. Carolyn, back to you. Thank you, that was the, uh, that was the advent of workout videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, 
the uh, uh, so we only have a few minutes left. Real fast, I'm going to uh, send the question to the uh, to the participants about uh, how are you staying sane. See if we have any comments, and then I'm going to allow the uh, panelists here uh, to wrap up. Um, so we don't uh, we don't over um, overbook your time too much. So how are you say, staying sane? Does anyone have any other uh, uh, tips to offer to the rest of the participants? And if you want uh, Vinay's uh, email, uh, contact me uh, so you can let him know whether you watch Richard Simmons or not. Uh, so um, taking it day by day from Teresa and Joy, she's attending lots of webinars and seeing this time as a growth period and if, um, if she picks up one suggestion out of these webinars, it's good. Good, that's great. That's great. And I think there's, there's a lot of value behind taking things day by day. You know, sometimes it's just better to take things in small pieces. We really don't know what a month, it's gonna look like a month from now. And all the news does is speculate, but we don't know, right? We just know what today is like and maybe what tomorrow will be like. And I think that, that brings some sanity to a lot of people thinking of it like that. So Dick, don't put too much stock in those experts because they don't know what's going on. And they, a lot of them actually say, look, it's all new to all of us. So it's an opinion. If they, have, if they don't, don't watch too much of that fear because they don't really yeah. know what they're, you know, they don't yeah. know what's going to happen tomorrow. We, we've absolutely talked about being mindful, which is about being present and being engaged. And on a daily basis, that's wonderful. It's <laughs> defining productivity broadly, no pressure. That's great. So uh, Dixie said she's catching up on her reading. I tried to start sewing masks, so I'm trying. Mm. To cool. I'm, I'm trying. To well, you, you, thing. you know, the number one way to alleviate anxiety is to help someone else. Exactly. So if there's a way you can give back to your community in some way, you end up going to the supermarket, find out if there's anybody in the neighborhood that needs a few things. I can. It feels so good. It feels so good to give. Right, it helps you get out of your head a little bit. It's the number one perspective I've gotten. That's a great point, Karen. Yep. That's how I've been operating. It's, it's, I wanna put my worries in perspective and see who I can reach out to. Even if it's sending an uplifting meme or yep. a message or a phone call to someone, it's that simple of an action or doing more for people that maybe have less than you. And you know, this webinar is a prime example of how we're helping others. Absolutely. So uh, just to go into closing remarks, Taryn, uh, if you'd like to, uh, you know, wrap up yours. Um. I, yeah, I just think, you know, I don't, um, not to, you know, take anyone too much of anyone's time at this point, but I think that the best way to wrap this up is just when you wake up, try to do something a little different throughout your day. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you want to feel better, if you want to be more productive, then mix something up throughout your day. Shift something, whether it's trying cognitive reframing, whether it's being more mindful of your breathing, whether it's doing a home workout, do something different. I can guarantee you, you will not feel different if you don't try something new. So that's, that's my two cents. Thanks, Taryn. How about you, Vinay? Yeah, I, I just think it's super important to laugh. I, I do this. I, I end my day always after a hard day's work where I'm, I feel like a jellyfish and I can walk away from the monitor. I just turn on some comedy and I get that laughter going. Uh, I've read psych professionals. They've noted, uh, you know, staying away from social media and uh, news at night because uh, most news is not going to be good anyways, um, regardless of Corona or not. Um, so you want to stay away from disturbing stuff because that leads to poor let restless sleep. You actually don't get into really Zen's uh, uh, sure. sleep when mm -hmm. you're really disturbed. So, uh, you know, end your day watching something funny. Thanks for Pam? that. How about you, Pam? So I, am, you know, I would encourage you to use this gift of time wisely. Reflect on life, what's working or not working, that perspective is about growing, adapting, learning, transforming. Becoming more resilient means changing your mindset toward the change and having the positive, looking at the positive opportunities it holds. And I would also recommend, you know, my definition of courage 
It's not about being fearless, but it's feeling the fear and doing it anyway, which is what everyone is doing. So you're all courageous. And our country and our world will emerge from this pandemic with new norms, new knowledge, new innovation, and a resilience that will transform society. So be patient with yourself during this time. Make mm -hmm. some good proactive decisions to navigate those items that you can control. Be generous and compassionate with everyone. Find ways to contribute to the, to the greater good. So stay informed, strong, courageous, mindful, healthy, and socially connected. Back to you, Carolyn. Thanks, Pam. And thanks to all of you for participating. Um, and thank you uh, to all of the panelists. And they've already uh, mentioned to me that if you'd like to get in touch with any of them for any of your specific questions, uh, feel free. And the emails are right here on the screen. Um, and with that, um, I, I had uh, pulled the audience to see if there was any closing questions, and I haven't gotten any. So, um, so I, I just uh, hope everyone has a good rest of your day. Uh, thank you for all the tips. Um, I really, I really got a lot out of this uh, myself, and I and I got some tips I'm going to put into uh, implementation right away. Uh, and Taryn shared a quote with us: "Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it." Helen Keller. Thank you so much. What a wonderful way to close. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Please stay safe. Stay, stay well. Have a good day. Stay healthy and safe. Have a good day. Thank you for participating. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.